This is the bobtail Labrador. <laughs> He's pretty. Pass me that. Thank you so much. Now, out of a clear blue sky, no. And what did he just do? He came right back at me. Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. Come on. Yes, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. Now, the, the scientific behaviorists would tell you that somehow or another this dog is now going to attack me. Are you going to jump? You're going to jump. Oh, you can jump on me. No, you're not. They don't do that. The point is that these animals are designed to, yes, you want to retrieve this. I know you do. Okay, bud. No. Now, I said the word no because he had it in his mouth. And then I took my time and I bonked him. Now I'm going to do this. No. I mean, do you see his brains oozing out? No. He just takes it. And then he doesn't hate me. He's wagging his tail. But wait a minute. I punished him. He's giving me kisses. The idea that these dogs are so fragile that if you're hard on them, they're going to die or they're going to attack you and rip your throat out is absolutely nuts. But the point is that the way this dog was a minute ago, you can't groom this dog. Well, you can, but you're not going to get everything wet on time. And you're not going to get everything dry on time because he's just a knucklehead. Oh, and he wants to get the, oh, here's a good one. He wants to get treats, okay? I'm going to show you very quickly how to get that out of the mix. God, this is a boob. By the way, this is a great candidate for a gentle leader. Do you know what that is, a, a head halter? They, uh, halters of all kinds are fantastic. You can get them for about 10 bucks wholesale and then um, sell them for about 20 bucks retail. So it's a great addition to your shop. But the main thing is that when the dog comes in to your shop, they're controlled, even dogs like this. And the more the people walk them in public, the more controlled they are. Now, you can see him. He's suddenly going, oh, I know. I, I sit. I get a treat. I sit. I get a treat. What I'm going to teach him right now, though, is something a little bit different. I'm going to drop the treats on the ground. And when he goes for them, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to nail him. No. OK. End of repetition number one. And now, he's, he's not doing it. He does think I'm nuts. But so's he. So he's happy with that. So if I rub his chin and everything, and I go, oh, you just such a kissy puss. And he's looking at him. He knows that's there. He's not going for it. So guess what I do now to balance out the punishment? I say, good boy. You do good boy. Yes, you're a good boy. And then I'm going to go over here. He's not messing with my stuff. If he lived in a house with kids, hey. If he lived in a house with kids, he would be bugging them over there, popcorn and jumping all over everybody, and I'm eating a, hey, eating a snack. Good boy. You can have that. Now, he's still a little intimate with me over here. And so I'm not quite finished with the process. And he's still trying to test. No. Come here. Now, I think I've demonstrated there's no downside to this. He doesn't hate. He doesn't hate me. Now, apparently, according to most of the behaviors on this planet, this didn't happen. So you're all hallucinating. I punished the dog, and, and he's supposed to tear my throat out. Isn't that true? But he didn't. And I'm competing over food with this big strapping dog. And if I punish him, he'll attack me. He'll attack me. Yes, he will. With his tongue is what he'll attack me with. Give me a kiss. OK, so I'm eating my potato chips here, and I'm snack, snack, snack. And now he's not trying to grab it. He's trying to scratch his ear because he's distracted. So now I'm going to put this down. Hey, bud, what's his name? Do we even know? I know what his name is. His name is Doofus. Jaeger. Jaeger? Jaeger. Okay. Well, that means hunter in German. What is your problem, dude? Come here. Have that. Now, I just gave him a treat for being polite. He got bonked for trying to grab my food. He got a treat for not trying to grab it. He said, good boy. Now, I just said, good boy. And, I'm, and listen to that. The plastic, the wrinkling of the plastic is driving him nuts. And he gets his treat politely, and he takes it softly. If I do this once today, right now, the next time somebody hands me this dog's leash, he'll be a little bit knuckleheadish, but not that bad, because he's going to know it's that guy. 
and he's going to associate me with these consequences. And he's not going to grab the treats if I drop them. He's going to be more polite. I have suppressed behavior generally across a broad spectrum, which is what I said happens after you punish a dog. He sucked up. He tried to sit to give me a behavior that he knew would normally work on people to make them happy. And ultimately, he's not in my face. <laughs> so stressed from the punishment. I, it is always amazing. I have spent 25 years battling this stuff. The fact that these experts want to talk about punishment, how come they don't report this? And the answer is, I know this sounds tough. They've never actually done it. They only read about it in books. Because every kennel attendant on the planet uses their knee to knock dogs just like this, butt over tea kettle, when they jump up on them. And I've never heard of a dog having to go to the vet because somebody need them in the chest. Not that it couldn't happen. Good boy. Yeah, you're good. Not that it couldn't happen. But it's rare. And all of us who work with dogs, we see them down. This is a tough one. I don't know if he knows this behavior. Wrong. Down. There we go. I like this dog. <laughs> Good boy. And we're starting to develop a relationship here. Groomers are rarely interested in this kind of stuff because you have a job to do. But sometimes, but if you know how to do this and you take a few minutes ahead of time, you save yourself lots of time in the future. <laughs> you think he's figured out what I want? By the way, I did a, a presentation yesterday, which was the one with the uh, puppy training, with that Springer. And that Springer was just as stupid as this. And within about 10 minutes, this is exactly what was happening. Now, yes. The only thing I Good boy. know about this dog was that the owner said it's so safe we don't know how to deal with it. Okay, so there you go. It was a baby. And, and part of it is because this dog is, is bred to run 32 miles a day looking for birds. And when he finds them, that's when he stops. So they either have to walk around with a quail in their pocket or find some way to inhibit the dog's behavior. And, like, and I was serious. I like this dog. Good boy. He is attentive. He's focused on me. He's not in my face. He doesn't care if I ruffle this. Uh, he's a delightful dog. And if you're a groomer and you know how to do this, this dog's going to be easy to handle in the tub. Because he starts getting goofy, and you say the word no, and you knock him on the head with a bonker. You have towels in your shop. I know that. Don't lie to me. And the, it's a plain old 25 by 36 Motel 6 variety. I'm not supposed to mention brand names, though, so I guess, okay, uh, gym towel and um, two number 64 rubber bands, specifically number 64 rubber bands, tripled over the end. I folded it in half lengthwise. I rolled it up tightly into a tube like a bedroll. And just to prove to you, I have an, an interesting thing when people get freaked out about punishment. I will let you do to me anything I would do to a dog that I train. You look at that. Did you see that? You I got your good boy. Boy, he did. But he didn't get bonked. You know why? I didn't say N-O. 